Hi everyone, in this video we're going to get started on creating a Spring Boot application and this will serve as a starting point for many of my other videos to come that will build upon many of the different features that Spring Boot offers. So the first thing we want to do is to go to Spring Initializer and the Spring Initializer website is one that allows us to not worry about the boilerplate of setting up a Spring Boot application but kinda just gives us everything we need to start off with and if you know you're going to use certain things, if you know you're going to be using MVC or you know you're going to be using a particular type of database like Postgres or whatever you can then add that dependency in there at that given time so let's just go to start.spring.io and once you get here you can determine what type of project you want so that might be Maven or Gradle to deal with your dependencies we're going to go with Maven uh, then you can select your language uh, you can choose Kotlin or Groovy but Java is one of the main ones that's used for Spring but they all compile and use the JVM so if you do want to use Kotlin or Groovy you can select that either and uh, then you go to the version of Spring Boot that you want we're just going to stick with the default of 2.6.5 then you can choose a group name, an artifact name uh, description and all the rest and your packaging type we're just going to keep this all default because it's just going to be used as examples uh, just to note when selecting your Java version um, don't select a Java version that's higher than the one that's on your machine for example if you select Java 11 and you only have Java 10 or Java 8 on your machine it will cause problems and the same goes if you select Java 17 and you have Java 15 on your machine so I believe I have Java 15 on my machine so I'm gonna select Java 11 but if you have a higher um, or lower uh, version of Java just select that then we go over to the dependencies and there's gonna be one main dependency that we're gonna use for more or less all the videos going forward and that's gonna be Spring Web so Spring Web allows us to create RESTful applications so you can create REST endpoints and you can hit them with some sort of client so that client could be Postman, that could be a curl command or it could even be just open up that endpoint within the browser and it allows you to have an embedded web server uh, it uses Apache Tomcat as the default one right out of the box so that's the one that we're going to be using um, in the future videos then there's another couple dependencies that's very useful one of them is JPA so if you just type in JPA you can see that spring data JPA and you can just add it like that another one that's very handy is H2 so H2 is an in-memory database so let's just talk about JPA for a second so when we create objects within our Spring Boot application for example if we have a person object and that person object has a first name, a last name and an age maybe and we want to store that object straight into our database using JPA can be very easy to map our objects that we have in Java straight to a table in you know whatever database you're using that might be Postgres that might be Oracle that might be MySQL so that's where Spring Data JPA is very useful then moving on from that you have the H2 database so H2 is very similar to any other database as far as it uses um, SQL like any other of the relational databases the only thing is that it's in memory so it runs in memory so it will take up some of your memory and that means it's very fast so if you just have a small application that you're using just to play around with and use spring it's very handy because it'll mean fetch times will be much lower if you're creating a more enterprise like application that's going to be dealing with a lot of data things like that you might want to select a more traditional database such as the ones we talked about earlier like Postgres, Oracle or whatever and to do that you just look for that dependency here so you can see we have the Postgres SQL driver so what you would do if you're going to be using Postgres 
for your application, you wouldn't need H2, so you could just delete it like that. But I'm going to delete the Postgres uh, dependency, and I'm going to add in the H2 one. So these are the three main core dependencies that you use when working with Spring Boot, or that you're going to use in the future videos I'm going to create. You can get away with just the Spring Web for a lot of them. If you're just going to be creating RESTful endpoints um, and somehow you want to mock the data that's going to come from those, or there's another way where you want to maybe call procedures on your database or something like that. But I'm going to use these three uh, as a default template working in the future. So to generate our project, we just go down here and hit generate, and you can see it starts to download a zip file. Now what we want to do is we want to get that zip file, we want to unzip it, and then we want to open it in our IDE. So I use IntelliJ as my IDE, so that's the one that I'm going to be using for this video and the future videos. So let's jump into that. I'm just opening up my new file. It's still resolving some of the dependencies for this project, so it may just take a couple of minutes or so just to get everything right and then what I like to do is once I have my application uh, loaded up in IntelliJ I like to just go and run the application as it is before trying to build anything else out before adding in anything just to make sure that things are as they should be and that the application actually runs so I think we're ready to go now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go up here and hit the run button and hopefully it will work. It might actually, there might be another application running on the same port so I might have to, I might have to kill that process but it might, it might work. I'm not sure if there's another Java application running on port 8080 because port 8080 is the default port and look, we can see that this this has actually uh, loaded up successfully. You can see the JVM is running, so it doesn't just just as a def just as a just as a note going forward. By default, it starts up on port eighty eighty. Now you can change that in your your properties file. So your properties file is just in here, and if you go into source. Then you go into main and then you see resources. You'll see this application.properties file. Now there's nothing in here at the minute, but if you did want to change the default port for whatever reason, maybe you're maybe you have an application that's already running on port 8080 and you want to change it to 8081 or 8082, you can do that within this file. But if you don't have any other applications, you do not need to worry about that. So this is basically a Java Spring Boot application up and running. Now it doesn't do anything because we haven't added anything to it. You can see if you look inside the main folder where you'll be working, uh, it's in this directory here. So it's within source, within main, java.com, example.demo, that's what we named it. And then you'll have a demo application uh, class. And this is where everything is started off. You can see it has an annotation of at Spring Boot and it has this main method and that's where everything will be kicked off from. So you can you can go into the Spring Boot application class to see a little bit more information about it, but it's not important at the minute. So I hope you gained something from the video. If you did like it, give it a like, don't forget to subscribe and have a good day.